this video, I'm going to take a virtual machine in Hyper-V and I'm going to clone it. And in this case, I'm actually going to clone the virtual machine using a feature called Differencing Disks. This is going to allow me to have a base image that I can work off of and then I can clone this machine to multiple virtual machines from there and they can all start from that same base image. So what I have here is this Server 2. This is a fresh install of 2012. This doesn't have to be a fresh install for us to use differencing disks, but this gives me a nice basic example to work with. So in this particular virtual machine, I have a couple of settings that are already set. And one of the things that we want to do if we're ever going to clone a virtual machine, or any machine for that matter, is we want to make it as generic as possible. We want to actually go back to that original out-of-box experience that we have when we first install Windows. But saying that, we still want to keep any driver installations or software installations or custom configurations that do need to persist over all of the different machines. So we can do that here in Hyper-V, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a program called SysPrep. And to do that, I need to run a program from the command prompt. So I'm going to go back up to my root directory. I'm going to do a cd backslash. And that changes the directory just to the backslash. You'll notice there's a backslash here right at the top of your C drive that says go all the way up to the top of that drive letter. And I'm going to cd into Windows. The Windows directory is uh, where a lot of the operating system files are. I'm going to cd into system32. And the directory I'm looking for is sysprep. And this should be built into most versions of Windows at this point. Uh, older versions of Windows, it was an additional download. I'm going to do a dir command to list the contents of this directory. And what you'll see is there's not a lot in here, but the important thing is the sysprep.exe file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sysprep this image and sysprep allows me to make that computer generic again. So I'll run sysprep from the command prompt here and it launches this little window and there's only a few options here. It says what do you want to do when you clean up your system? It's giving us hardware independence and cleanup. It's going to clean out any um, things like a unique computer name or um, some other things that are unique beneath the surface that can cause us problems when we do need our machines to be truly unique. So I'm going to choose to go to the system out-of-box experience and I am going to generalize the system. I could also enter audit mode if I wanted to do that, but I'm going to go with the out-of-box experience and generalize. And there's a shutdown options here. I can quit, reboot, or shut down. Once I finish running sysprep, it's usually recommended to do a shutdown because at the end of this process this image, this entire virtual hard drive is made generic so by doing this I don't want it to even boot up again because what am I going to see when it boots up? That out-of-box experience. It's going to say hey welcome to your new installation of Windows so I actually want it to run through the process and shut down this computer so that I can then take that virtual hard drive and use it in other ways. So I'm going to choose the shutdown option and sysprep will begin working here and it's going to run in the background here through all of my files throughout my registry and it's going to scrape out anything unique and it's going to put the system back in place as if it was a brand new machine. You may wonder how do the major computer manufacturers have computers that are installed and they look brand new when you open them up and fire them up for the first time but there's no settings in there but yet they still have their own unique software in there. Well this is how they do it. They build one image exactly the way that they want that image to uh, propagate out, then they sysprep it, shut it down, and then they clone that out to all of their new machines. The first time those machines are powered on, it always will look like a brand new machine. So this is a goal for us when we do want to uh, make a lot of machines act just the same. So this sysprep does take a little while and 
Uh, when it does finish, I've chosen the shutdown option, it will initiate a shutdown. So don't be surprised when you try this and your computer powers off. Whether it's a virtual or a physical machine, it'll power off at the end of this and that's exactly what you want. Now that my virtual machine is off, what I can do is I can go and look at my virtual hard drive and make sure that I don't possibly mess that original virtual hard drive up now because it's going to be the basis for several other virtual machines. So I can close this out and I can now delete this virtual machine. This virtual machine should never be powered up again because what I've done is I've taken the virtual hard drive that's associated with that virtual machine and I've set it up in a state that is ready to be deployed for other stations. So since I never want that one to boot up again, I can choose to delete the virtual machine. Make sure you don't choose remove server because that would remove your server in Hyper-V Manager. Make sure you're working on that virtual machine. Let's delete that virtual machine. Now you'll notice that that particular virtual hard drive does not get deleted. Just the virtual machine configuration will be deleted. I can go in and look at If I go to the path where my virtual hard drives live, which by default is C, Users, Public, Documents, Hyper-V, Virtual Hard Disks. If I go to that path, I'll see that the virtual hard disk for that server is still there. It's right here. I'm going to rename this to something that's a little more useful to me. I'm going to call it Base Image, just so that I know that it's not the virtual hard drive that's attached to any of my existing virtual machines. And now I can create a new hard disk. And this is going to attach to a new virtual machine. Now I can't create a new hard disk while I create the virtual machine in this case because I want to use a differencing disk. And the option to create a differencing disk it does not exist in the virtual machine creation wizard. So I'm going to make a new hard disk. I'm going to leave it as a VHDX and I'm going to choose a differencing disk. This type of disk does create a parent-child relationship. The parent is that base image file that I just showed you and the child is going to be the new disk that I create. So I'm going to call my additional virtual hard disk clone server one and I'm going to choose that name just so that for this testing purpose, I can identify that this is a clone off of the main one. And I'm going to leave it in the same path where it was. And now I need to select the hard disk that I'm using as the parent. So if I browse, I'm going to choose base image as the parent for clone server one. And I can say finish. And then new hard disk is created. You can see it right here. And anytime you create a disk that's dynamically expanding, it always starts as 4 megabytes. So this single hard drive is actually all of the contents of base image and then all of the changes to the contents of base image. So as I add files, they'll go into clone server 1. As I change files, they'll also go into this clone server 1 file. So this file will continue to grow. I'm going to make a new virtual machine. And I'll call it clone server one. 
just to keep my same naming convention. It'll be generation 2. I'll start it with a gig of memory and I will use dynamic memory. I'll connect it to my external Ethernet card. This is my external switch in Hyper-V and I named it Ethernet and I named one Wi-Fi just so it's a little easier to quickly pick up on what those are doing. And then instead of creating a virtual hard disk, I'm going to attach an existing virtual hard disk. So when I browse, I'm going to choose Clone Server 1. Now you might think, well, I need to include both of these, but really Clone Server 1 knows that it's pointing to Base Image as its parent. So Base Image doesn't really know about Clone Server 1, but Clone Server 1 knows about Base Image. So Clone Server 1 is the one that I'm going to choose. This is the new differencing disk that I created. And then I can say next and finish. It'll create my virtual machine. I can start that machine up. And I can even connect to it here. And we can see what happens when I connect up. While this is booting, uh, one would expect that changes are actually happening to the hard drive as it boots up log files get generated, etc. So if I looked back at my disk here, you'll notice some changes have been made from that base image. You can see that no changes have been made since the date when I had manipulated base image last, but now Clone Server 1 is changing. This one will never change. This base image will never change. At least, I never want it to change. Jumping back to Hyper-V, it is loading as if it was a brand new machine. When we ran SysPrep, we told it, make the out-of-box experience again. So this is that exact out-of-box experience. It gets rid of all of the hardware assumptions. It gets rid of all of the, the computer name and the main usernames and all of that. It's all a fresh install and all of that personalized stuff is out of there. So when you do a sysprep, you can actually take that sysprep image and dump it onto different hardware. You probably noticed it was getting devices ready because it has to get rid of all of its assumptions about what hardware it used to live on. And then when it starts up, it will ask me questions as if I'm just opening up a brand new server out of the package. It will take a little while and it does need to look through uh, all of my hardware and initialize all of those initial settings. Things are changing on the computer and this file continues to be updated. I'm just going to keep this one off to the side so we can continue to reference it. and it keeps growing. Meanwhile, my machine is starting up for the first time. And in a little bit here, we'll be at the initial configuration for this new server. Now the neat thing about this is that you can make another virtual machine and you can make another differencing disk and it can still be based on this base image. You could make as many as you want based off of this one base image. The nice thing about that is rather than each image being 15 plus gigs, right now I'm only at one gig or so and it'll probably grow a little bit, but you don't have to worry about it growing by leaps and bounds in comparison to starting all of them from their own image. So it is pretty efficient when it comes to hard disk space and disk I.O. So even if I had 10 different virtual machines running all off of this base image, it would be a disk savings and the disk may be able to cache some of the information that was on that base image that's used between multiple machines. So here's our out-of-box experience. All the assumptions are gone and I'm setting this up as if it's a brand new machine. You can do this, as I said, multiple times, and you can set up 
all of the uniqueness that you need and create an additional set of machines. So this is how you clone machines without using any additional products, just using a basic Hyper-V manager.